Hi, this is Andip Jali and Manos Berlakis, presenting case 298 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. Usually, when a patient has an occluded vein graft, we try to recanalize the native coronary artery. But this is a case in which uh, the saphenous vein graft CTO was treated instead and provided a good result. The patient was a 69-year-old gentleman who had bypass surgery 10 years prior with lima to LAD, vein graft to the first and vein graft to the second diagonal branch. His vein graft to the second diagonal closed a few years back, but now he presented with new angina, anterolateral ischemia on the stress test, and new occlusion of the saphenous vein graft to the first diagonal. He was sent in an attempt to recanalize the native first diagonal. And this is the angiogram. Um, there is uh, a patent circumflex, patent ramus. Uh, the LAD has competitive flow from the lima. However, it's very hard to know where the diagonal branch is coming from. We have this very small first diagonal, but we did not have access to previous angiograms to determine where the first diagonal was coming from. And this was the stump from the vein graft to the first diagonal branch. So our plan here was to try to recanalize the first diagonal CTO, the native vessel. We don't know exactly where it's coming from in the LAD, which has previous stents. We do see the distal vessel fill late through epicardial collaterals. And therefore, our plan here was to try retrograde crossing through the occluded vein graft. And if that didn't work, try IVUS and see if we could locate the origin of the first diagonal. How to cross the vein grafts? The usual way is to use a microcatheter, Corsair, and a polymer jacketed guide wire, a Pilot 200, made good progress going through that vein graft. It did require some redirection, and sometimes we may do contrast ejection to guide our crossing. Eventually, um, the wires seem to go along the course of the vessel, and this needs to be confirmed, so we did uh, injection through the left main. And uh, we do see that actually we are into the true lumen distally with a delayed filling. The next question was, where is actually the distal cap to go retrograde and open the native? So we did tip injection through the microcatheter in the saphenous vein graft. But unfortunately, it's very hard to see. We do have filling on the native, but not really a clear-cut proximal cap. So what uh, should we do next? How can we understand where the first diagonal is coming off from the LAD? This is an injection again on both the vein graft as well as the native, but once again, it is not clear where this first diagonal is coming from. We did IVUS into the saphenous vein graft. Uh, that didn't help us much. We also did IVUS on the native coronary artery, and this is the IVUS on the LAD. Unfortunately, there are previously placed stents, and we had a very hard time understanding where the diagonal branch was coming off. So this was not uh, very useful in terms of uh, planning to cross the native diagonal. We did use a dual lumen microcatheter, and we tried to advance uh, a retrograde wire where we thought the uh, diagonal was going backwards. But again, we had a very hard time. Again, injections, it's hard to know. Try to um, do some searching on the native LAD also without success. And after multiple attempts and after giving contrast, we just could not figure out um, the proximal cap and the distal cap. Literally, there is just flow straight into the distal diagonal. We don't see any backwards flow. So after multiple attempts and uh, trying to sort this out, we decided to stand the saphenous vein graft. So we did place uh, two drag eluting stents all the way from a distal anastomosis all the way back to the ostium. And after doing that, uh, we didn't have very good flow. We did some post dilatation. Flow is like it, but sometimes this can be the distal anastomosis. So we did some post dilatation. And after doing that, we did have a nice flow, Timothy flow into the diagonal branch, which is a fairly sizable branch. And looks satisfactory. However, uh, we did some uh, post dilatation to optimize the result. 
And after a few minutes, we did have those filling defects form inside the saphenous vein graft. So concern for acute stent thrombosis here. We used a thrombectomy with a penumbra catheter. We gave vasodilators and we also gave cangrelor. Uh, we didn't have concerns about perforation, although that's always something in, to keep in mind in case of uh, CTO-PCI attempts. And then uh, the patient did have good flow at the end, uh, good flow, Timothy flow through the saphenous vein graft into the native vessel. He did very well. We saw him back almost a year after the original procedure, and he was feeling great without uh, uh, chest discomfort, uh, and he was feeling able to do all his activities without limitation. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that although the goal is always to open the native coronary CTO if we can, in this case, uh, we ended up opening the CTO of the vein graft instead because we just could not recanalize the native uh, coronary CTO, could not figure out the course of the native vessel. There are some data now that in patients who have vein graft lesions and native lesions treating the vein graft in the Proctor study, is advantageous. However, that study excluded patients with CTOs of the vein grafts. But this patient, again, is doing well almost a year out, so that's encouraging news in terms of long-term tempacy. The other lesson is about acute stent thrombosis. It can happen. Uh, potentially, this vein graft might have been occluded not too long ago. It may have some thrombus, some distal embolization, and solutions for when, when there is no reflow is, uh, and stent thrombosis is to do thrombectomy give vasodilators and more aggressive antiplatelet therapy, which included cangrelor in our patient. Thank you.